Welcome to this next episode of YouTube, where we did a triannual medical exam uh, per USDA specs. And one of the other things that we were looking at is Grizzer had a tooth that was discolored and losing some dentition. So we were able to look at it and see that it probably needed a little bit more attention. We also had the discoloration of the pigmentation loss on Aiden. And as a triennial exam, we typically will then draw blood and look for any diseases or issues. We do monitor the wolves' pulse, temp, and respiration while they're down. And we discovered by looking at the grizzly's tooth that there was an abscess pocket below the tooth. So we definitely needed to have that tooth removed. After the tooth has been extracted, um, we will use dissolvable stitches to um, close up that socket so that uh, it doesn't um, get food debris or, or things in there and, and heals up fairly well. He also is on a course of seven days of antibiotics uh, after this removal of the tooth. And one of the reasons why we do it in March is that with the puppies coming, Grizzer, Aiden, and Denali are going to have direct nose-to-nose -nose contact with the pups, and so we want to make sure that we have a good blood draw and a good uh, blood chemistry to make sure that there's no issues or diseases that the adults may have that would be risky for the puppy. So it's a good opportunity and we do it well in advance of the pup's arrival. So if there is something that comes back from the lab reports that we can address it and treat it before the pups get there. So Grizzly's extraction was extremely smooth. Uh, again, just two stitches to two to three stitches to close up that, uh, that hole in the gum. And we clean it up and get rid of the excess debris and the and the blood and make sure that it's again sealed well and that it's it's comfortable for him after his tooth extraction then we go ahead and clean tartar and so that's something that we do every three years actually these wolves have really good um, teeth one of the things about chewing bones is that it really controls some of that tartar buildup that you might find in a dog so they didn't really need too much and as I said, we get a full blood panel on all three wolves. Whereas Aiden, again, had a punch by ups on that nose. And just a reminder, we did deal with this before. This is Lucas. And Lucas uh, was the dominant male in the pack. He was born in 1993. Only Lucas's condition had pigmentation loss on his feet as well. So we're going to try to see if we can get the same diagnosis that we did with Lucas. And we'll treat the same way and be able to identify that. And this is Denali here on the table. Denali didn't have any real issues. We did take a fecal uh, and did express his anal sink glands. He had a little butt scooting. The fecals came back normal. And uh, so we just uh, looked at those scent glands, and they were expressed during the medical exam, and really no issues. We're not really certain what, what, the, issue, what the problem was with him butt scooting. So back in the main pack, uh, the recovery time for wolves is relatively short. And the whole time that we were doing the immobilization of Grizzer, Aiden, and Denali, Shadow did communicate. He was howling and kind of keeping track of things. And as soon as we started to the drugging process, he started the howling. But this is actually filmed two days later. Um, the wolves are up and moving around and, you know, back to the same old relationship that they had. And that's the other key thing in an immobilization is that we will usually... If we have a dominant animal like Aiden, we'll recover him in the exhibit and recover Denali in holding. And the reason why we did that is because Denali likes to test. And one of the comments people had was in previous YouTubes was, was why does Denali test? Well, Denali's a wolf, and Denali's a little bit lower ranking than Aiden, and that's what lower ranking wolves do is watch for weakness or any other kinds of situations that might warrant an opportunity to move up in rank and so we uh, see Denali you know always being watchful of that so we didn't want Aiden recovering or you know, with Denali we wanted Aiden up and mobile before Denali came out we also have a lot of distractions this is a moose head that had been laying around for a while and uh, keeps them out of trouble so over in retirement uh, we have Malik here doing a little bit of a face wipe and again, these guys did not need a mobilization because they had a March, or sorry, May of 2011 exam, and they were found to be healthy, and they will not have direct contact face to face with the pups, so it's not as critical for them. If you recall, Malik had a tooth extraction last May, and so we we don't need to do them again, uh, according to USDA specifications. Three years is the outset, meaning we do immobilizations as we need them, but if we don't need them, uh, we try to have one at least every three years. So Malik is uh, finishing off some of the deer, 
and you see here a little response to the camera he didn't like the camera eye being on him so he moved it behind some vegetation but as I said real earlier these guys are going kinda back towards the large carcass feedings and you'll be I may have noticed that they've been caching things in the den uh, they had part of the deer rib cage in the den with them and that is really one of those things where we'll monitor how they're eating and how they're feeding and if they are getting along very well and we are certain that both wolves can get a sufficient amount of food we will feed a larger carcass and that's what we did here with the deer what's interesting is you watch Malik use his paw to control it just really don't appreciate how big these wolves are and how big their paw sizes are until you really see it in perspective as as using it as a tool here but that's um, again just a little bit of a tidbit that's left from a maybe about a 70 pound carcass that they got and that's six days post feeding I believe and so they utilize them and they have that opportunity to ins to chew on it uh, much later which is probably why again their teeth are so clean so we continue to use straw we've had a couple of nights where even though it's March uh, we've had some s below zero weather and giving them that straw opportunity again just kind of keeps them off of the uh, cold compacted snow and Shadow here is watching the wolf lab trying to see what's going on and we'll continue to use straws until we uh, reach that time when nighttime temperatures are at least above freezing and that's just our general practice here so as you can say Shadow uh, was very intent when uh, Grizzer was first drugged he started a lot of howling and then when, Shadow, when Aiden and Denali went down Shadow was very responsive and watchful of the wolf care staff. As a matter of fact, I think uh, Shadow was probably on to it that we were doing a medical exam before anybody else. Uh, anytime four or five wolf care staff get together, he's been around long enough to know that that's usually some kind of an event. And so that uh, was typical of Shadow. So as far as Grizzer, I don't have any uh, footage of him other than from the surveillance camera. And Oscar was actually off-site for two days. Uh, we didn't have him on-site with the medical exam because as we're drugging wolves and moving them, we didn't really need the stimulus of Oscar getting excited around them or trying to reach them. We definitely wanted the things calm. And as you can see, when Oscar's here, it's not exactly calm. But Grizzer was so excited to see him when he came back on-site. And you can see from this video just the rolling around paw and tail wagging. Um, extremely excited when Oscar came back and that gets Oscar excited sometimes Oscar gets a little barky in this kind of excitement so we do like to control that a little bit but Grizzer was having such a good time we didn't really stop Oscar but what's interesting is Aiden and Denali um, see this and kind of come over do a play ball when they're stimulated into social engagement so again Oscar's role here is to stimulate Grizzer that's really what his job is Stimulating Aiden and Denali is secondary. Now, one thing that's interesting is Aiden comes up to greet Oscar, and Oscar has no, you know, negative impact. But as soon as Denali comes over, he kind of picks up on Denali's uh, testing a little bit, and he's really a lot more focused on on letting Denali know that he's in charge of the wolf yard, uh, Oscar that is. So it's kind of interesting the dynamics between the two of them. And then on this next clip, little Barky. Um, uh, Grizz, uh, Grizz, uh, Grizzer, I believe, started this. I can't recall who started it, but I, then Shadow joins in, and Oscar, being a dog, starts out barking and then tries again to howl with the pack. What I find is if I stay inside the lab, he howls more, and when I come out to take footage of it, he barks more. So I don't know if he has this idea that, you know, what, you know, to hardly know what dogs think, but. Um, if we're again if we stay away from the from the uh, from the yard when he's howling he'll actually have a pretty good howl with the wolves but as soon as the human presence comes in he comes back to a barking domesticated dog so Oscar is a little bit of a challenge we're working on protocols for the pup care staff who come in to deal with him we don't know how he's gonna like large crowds we don't know how protective he's gonna be of the pups uh, we don't know a lot of things about Oscar but we do know this he has been extremely valuable in Grizzer's social contact through the fence, and we will continue to appreciate that and continue to try to maintain him on site here to serve in that capacity. But that's it uh, for Wolf Care, and again, thanks for watching this YouTube, and we will hopefully have some lab results by the time uh, the next one rolls around. Thanks again.